Here's what we know. Hot air crammed into your engine kills power. Cool air makes power. That is why you need an intercooler in your boosted application in order to make power and also have some more detonation resistance. That's why it's super important in a streetcar. It's why you need an intercooler. And on this episode, we are gonna be fooling around with an air-to-air -air intercooler, specifically this one from Procharger. How does it work? Well, it's basically a radiator. As a matter of fact, you're gonna mount it in front of the radiator in your car so it gets air flow. You cram boost in this end, the boost comes out that end and goes to the engine, air flows through this radiator and makes it cooler. The thing is, I've never thought that this was really the trick set up for drag racing, and that's why we're also going to be testing this. See that tube in front of the intercooler? This is made by NOS, but there's a bunch of companies that make them to spray either carbon dioxide or nitrous oxide directly into your intercooler to chill the surface and in theory, cool down that air and take charge even more. So here's how our test regimen is gonna go. First, we're gonna run this engine with no intercooler at all. Then we're gonna install the air-to-air -air intercooler, but with no wind going through it. Then we're gonna blow through it, and then we're gonna start to fool around with carbon dioxide injection through the intercooler. The reason we're not using nitrous oxide is we don't want any to get up into the engine and contaminate it and make more power just because we're sort of injecting nitrous. Let me talk about the engine that we're gonna be testing today. Honestly, it's like a boilerplate LS these days. It's a turbo, it's 408 cubic inches, it has blueprint engines, heads, 225 at 50 hydraulic roller camshaft and a Holly high ram. Now the thing about this combination is by the time we get it intercooled, we believe this is fully a 91 octane deal. You can drive it on the street. However, for safety, we will be running on Sunoco 110. And by the way, this only has a 9.3 to one compression ratio. So that 91 octane claim is pretty realistic. All right, let me talk to the Steves, Brule, and Dulcich, and then we're gonna start to make turbo noise. Before we get into it, I realized in my stand-up I didn't uh, address this, but do you think this is a relevant test if you're using a centrifugal supercharger as well, instead of a turbo? Or even a root supercharger. Anytime you make the air compressed, it gets hotter. But you can't use an air-to-air -air intercooler with a root supercharger. No. <laughs> True. Yeah, it's so, relevant, I mean, at that end, the air temperature is everything, basically, in a boosted application, no matter what's producing the boost. Right. I think this is going to be interesting just because this is something I've never done before. No, and there's uh, more than one way to skin a cat here, so that'll be kind of fun, too. Yeah, we're, we're going to skin some cats sure. in various ways. <laughs> all right, cool. I think the first thing that we're going to do here is fire it up and run it with no intercooler at all. Steve's already tuned the thing up completely with Ish's help on the EFI, and uh, we're ready to make power. Do it. Let's do it. Do it. Horsepower, 778 at 6,500 RPM and 710 pound-feet of torque at 5,200. What I'm curious about is this whoop de doo <laughs> What's going that on there? That big bump? <laughs> yeah. We, we were curious about it, too, but we looked at all the data, and the best thing that we can come up with is the wastegates oscillate just a little bit, even on the spring. They're trying to control the boost to a given number. We've got a bleed valve on it, too, in case we have to make some sort of mild adjustment later. But, but what I think we're seeing here is just a very slight change in the boost level. I mean, we can see one or two tenths difference as it's trying to oscillate the this? curve. Look, that's what it is. Can you we know, see like, the boost ooh. curve pulled up over this? He yeah, just he, pulled out. That's what it is. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Was... Don't question the dino brain is what I just learned. Here's the boost curve. It looks like it starts off, let's call it eight pounds, and it goes all the way up to 8.5. And this wobble right here is in between. So really, we're looking at 8.1 to 8.5, which is nothing, a couple it's, of it's tenths. It's not a lot, and you know, it's on the springs, we have a small controller there, but even as it oscillates a bit, trying to control that opening in the boost, you can start to see some of that. As the springs get hotter, it's gonna change, you know, with the exhaust temperature. So yep. there's gonna be a slight variance there. 
The next thing we need to look at is air inlet temperature, but we're not gonna do that until we have something to compare it to when we install the air to air, which we're gonna do right now. We're gonna go ahead and install an extension here off the front of the uh, turbo. What we're concerned about is potentially if there's any hot air from the intercooler, it contaminating the air inlet charge and raising the temperature and causing a power change. So to avoid that, we're putting the extension on. We've already pre-tested this and we know that it doesn't make a power difference on its own, but we just wanna make sure that we're not gonna skew any results by having this behind the intercooler. A lot of times you'll see guys with the air cleaners and that sort of thing behind the radiator. It's not a good situation. This is interesting. Just by adding the intercooler with nothing more than a light breeze passing through it, if that, we made more power. <laughs> 789 horsepower and 727 pound-feet of torque. Why? <laughs> Radiant heat. I mean, I think it's just the intercooler's dissipating heat. Let's do a comparison of the air. You want to do air or power? Let's do uh, air, then boost, then power. OK. Yeah. <laughs> So we're gonna look at manifold air temperature in the plenum on non-intercooled versus air-to-air -air intercooler with hardly any wind passing through it. This is with the intercooler, no wind. Which is going from 115 degrees up to 132. And this is no intercooler at all. And we're spiking much more temperature when we don't have an intercooler. We're going from 105 all the way up to 144. Yeah, this is where the power comes from. I mean, when we're looking at it kind of the same down there, part of that is the way I'm starting the pull. And honestly, it's kind of hard with the turbo sometimes, the way that you roll in, the temperature of the turbo. Yeah. It's difficult to duplicate every single run. But once I'm out of control, then this is. You can well, see the slope of the curve right there that the intercooler is yeah. doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Let's uh, have a look at the boost, see how much that changed from run to run. So the red lines are no intercooler, and the black is with the intercooler. You'll notice it makes less boost everywhere except for this little weird anomaly yeah. when it's got the intercooler on it. Less boost, more, more power. power. Which means colder air temperature. Colder air temperature makes less boost because... The air is more dense, yeah. so it takes up less space and um, lower pressure as a result. Yeah, we see that consistently. And that's only a good thing. Oh, oh yeah, it's an absolutely great thing. I mean, it helps suppress detonation, it makes more power, it doesn't take as much boost. It's just everything good about cold air. And because of that cold air, I noticed that also we had to tune it up a little bit. You just put a tick more fuel in it yeah. to match the air fuel ratio. It's not not fair to make a comparison when the tune-up has changed. So because of the colder air and more oxygen in the colder air, the mixture actually got leaner. So we had to add just a bit of uh, fuel to make the air-fuel ratios equivalent. Now let's look at the power between the two. Okay. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Obviously, red lines here are no intercooler. Black line is with the intercooler with colder air and less boost. And we're going to leave the less boost alone as we get colder and colder. My estimation is that we're going to see the power go up and up as we get the intercooler colder and colder. And so now you understand why. You've seen the effect of denser air. You've seen the effect of denser air on boost. You've seen the effect on power. So we don't need to explain that every single time as we go. We're just gonna make the intercooler colder and colder and colder, and you'll see the power go up and probably the boost go down. That would be what we would expect. So the next step is gonna actually be put a fan in front of the air to air intercooler and see if we can actually get some air moving through it and cooling off that, you know, turbo discharge. Make it work even better. Okay, let's aim that baby right there, getting close. Let's get some wind. There we go.
Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. We've crested 800 horsepower, 809.9, .9, and the pound-feet of torque is 749.2. Let's just ask why. I think we know why. It's going to be colder air, and the boost is probably going to drop. I could go out on a limb and say, I'll bet the air is colder. Let's yeah. have a look at that real quick. Let's compare it to the last one with no wind. OK. Air temp, air temp, air temp. Hmm. Wow. There we go. That. I think it's real <laughs> obvious what's happening here. Right here, the high line is greater heat with no wind. And then when we added wind, it was a whole lot colder. Looks like uh, we saw about 119 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, at peak. As as peak. It, it knocked down by 10, 12 degrees straight across. Did the boost drop again? I hadn't looked at that one. But I could go out on another limb and say, say right. probably. <laughs> Well, what we're looking at here is the red line is no fan and the black line is with fan. Honestly, we expected to see a greater difference there. As the air gets colder, it should reduce the boost more, yeah. but that's about the same. Again, that starting point down there can have a lot to do with the way I'm driving it. If I leave mm -hmm. my hand on the throttle a little longer before I push go, it will actually start to spool the turbo a little more and, and so the boost can come up. I, I tend to look at it from kind right. of here down. Um, it you... wasn't as big a change as I thought. So I've got four things about this so far. <laughs> First of all, we know for a fact that cooler air is always going to make more power, so that's great. Second thing, I think we know that the cooler air requires a different tune-up. You had to richen it up just a hair, right? Well, every time it makes more power, it takes more gas to go along with it. Yeah. Right? So had we not touched the fueling, it kept getting leaner and leaner. So to just make things an A-B level playing field, we had to keep adding fuel to keep the air-fuel ratio the same. Third thing is, at this point, I'm completely comfortable calling this a pump gas engine. I am too. I've seen similar cylinder pressure numbers run on 91 octane with an intercooler. And I've also seen similar cylinder pressure numbers break on 91 octane. With no with intercooler. With no intercooler. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the difference. It, we're it's making a huge a, change. We're making a BMEP right now of about 250, yeah. which is a lot. You know, is that like a 14 to 1 compression engine? Something That's like that. That's way past that. Way past yeah. that. Oh, yeah, you're right. It Four, would be 14 way bigger to 1 than is that. like 210. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so intercooler is the key to that. But here's my last point. This is really nothing like what you're going to see in a car. There's no heat radiating off a radiator. There's no radiator blocking the airflow here. So I think while we know the intercooler is good, I don't think it's this good in a car. No, I mean, it, it's under the hood temperature is going to play a big part, you know, and, and also with the air to air, it's stacked right in front of a 180 degree exactly. radiator. So it's not gonna be as effective, but still I think it proves the point. And right. that is why we're gonna go to our next step, which is <laughs> the CO2 sprayer on the intercooler, cooling it regardless of the situation in the car. Yeah. I mean, still it's gonna start at a higher temp and the, the CO2 is gonna cool it, not as much as what we're about to see, but I think it's still gonna show us what's what. Should we still blow the air through it when we're doing the CO2? I think if the car is going down the road, we should still be blowing the air on okay. it. I think that yeah. actually helps transfer. It's gonna be blowing through it if it's in the car, mm -hmm. so we wanna blow through it here too, as, as far as I'm concerned. Let's hook it up. Let's go. So there's a few things we did here to just eliminate the possibilities of any variables. Um, this kit, it's called a Cobra kit by Holly, is actually what cools the uh, intercooler. That's why it has, you see that it has a nitrous solenoid on it. We chose to use CO2 because we didn't want anyone thinking that, well, it's the nitrous that's maybe being sprayed, that's being induced into the air inlet, and that's what's causing a power increase. We want it to be strictly because of the cooling factor. So we're using CO2 there. We also extended this air horn out so it's in front of the intercooler, so there's no contamination there either. We want, really want to keep the testing tight, so we're looking at just air temperature. Now we've got the CO2 hooked up. We're going to do two things before we show you the results. The first one is we're going to hit the button just like a nitrous kit, meaning throughout the RPM sweep, we're just going to keep the button held down. 
The second thing we're gonna do is, when the motor's probably not even running, we're just gonna blast it with CO2. We're gonna freeze it as hardcore as we can, maybe even for like a minute, and then we're gonna run it. And then we'll look at the difference between those two techniques. Well, this is interesting. Our red lines here show the like super saturated long spray. The black lines are just tooting it while it's going down the track, so to speak. We did make the best power ever with the saturation. 822 horsepower, 763 pound-feet of torque. But that's not a huge difference. No, and, and, yeah. and the re it, it's not very realistic either because we were using a G-cylinder. <laughs> and all. I mean, I flipped a switch on and ran it for a minute or two. Yeah, we saturated <laughs> you know? like what would be a nitrous mother <laughs> bottle. Think of it that way. Yeah. We ran the whole thing through there. You couldn't do that in a car. No, you can't do you it. You just can't. And so therefore, that red line, the 822, is virtually irrelevant. Out the window. It was yeah. just uh, theoretical for testing purposes only, I would say. Yeah, I wanted to know. I thought it was a great idea, but it failed in practice. Let's look at the spray all during the sweep as compared with no CO2. OK. Ooh. <laughs> wow. The black line here is with the spray all the way through the pull, and the red lines are just a fan across the intercooler. Yeah. That is not worth it.